วัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะอาจารย์สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีคร
And one of the things that we're uh, we'll talking about uh, individuals, do we get, um, okay, individuals literally dumping on, on family members or friends in that way has to do with designating this individual as someone who's going to be on the lowest end of the totem pole. But that person has their own aspirations, uh, their own sense of themselves, and perhaps after a certain point, they decide that they want to actually ex exercise something beyond what those who are around them are limiting, what, limiting them with in their eyes. So you see, will see situations where someone decides that they found that they're interested in perhaps um, oh, art or something or music or um, something else that, you know, that takes talent and find that this individual um, actually has an aptitude for it. But also finding that that individual is feeling uh, better about themselves through this newfound uh, ability or talent. So usually when a person's been designated to be in that position by those who are around them, will find uh, maybe the whole group or maybe just uh, one or two specific members, depending on how large the group, how large the family is, who will try to discourage this individual from expressing themselves. So, so, so they see a glimmer of something that will actually make this person um, seem actually more talented than they, or have something more than they have. And that's another reason why certain individuals will, their weakness or their insecurity will come to the surface and they'll start to try to denigrate these individuals or try to dis, uh, say discourage them uh, from fulfilling something that will actually make them feel better about themselves. And so we can say that this goes just straight across the board, you know, um, to gender, uh, you know, just in age, um, old genetics, uh, culture, and so on and so forth, you know, to take it out broader. But I found that um, where I apply it most has to do with the situation where uh, folks are very intimate with, with their surroundings or the people in their surroundings and these individuals that um, they're pretty much told to trust in a certain way, but these folks are literally, as well, again, family is a loaded word, friend is a loaded word. So, I judge it all by how a person behaves, how they carry themselves, how they interact with one another, how they interact with you. So if you're someone who, you know, usually has been kind of dumped on, you kind of accept it because that sends it even more. That you accept that, okay, I looked at in this way and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, and it's almost like this is your role is to be dumped on or is to be the lowest one on the totem pole. But again, with your nature or if you have a certain tenacity or um, I'd say just an inner, inner um, I'd say inner tenacity, tenacity to, you know, to look beyond what others are saying you are, then you will find that you may experience or not may, you know, I would say generally will experience this type of behavior with someone who, uh, who is around you or is in the family or, or even like parents do this situation so, uh, quite a bit as well. Uh, there are situations with mothers and daughters where they will, I guess, will feel confident or comfortable when the kids are you know, just really small, but when they start to come into their own and start to branch out into their own interests, it becomes a threat to this person's, I would say, their status in that situation. So again, uh, <laughs> struggling with this, <laughs> but, anyway, but uh, hopefully I'm, I'm making sense of what I'm saying right now. But again, uh, I, because I really wanted to just literally just um, place it in something that, that uh, someone would feel and understand more intimately. Because if I say it's outwardly, it's like a certain group saying, okay, you know, we keep putting these people down to feel better about ourselves. You know, that's pretty much a given. That's kind of general. Uh, you know, if anyone's even halfway thinking, they they recognize that. And that's, they're just 
the ones who are busy putting other things down to feel good about themselves. But anyway, um, there's a. Uh, I, can read the the tr I can read the uh, true logic better than I did the first uh, term. I only read part of it, like you said, and it says only the weak of mind denigrate others to feel good about themselves. The weaker the mind, the harder they persist. And this ties into the uh, other true logic that you did for the 31st asset sheet, or what causes a weak mind? Mm -hmm. What 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 um, inspires people to want to denigrate others? You mm -hmm. know, like you were talking about in schools and things like that, where there's a whole hierarchy of mm -hmm. denigrating. So mm -hmm. they want to get to the top so they can denigrate others below them. Yeah, when I talked about, I guess that was uh, discussed a little bit, I guess, in uh, the previous one. That happens in a lot of businesses or, um, in my experience, uh, corporations where, you know, you, you know, people come in at a certain level and generally there's a supervisor and in most cases, uh, people have issues with their supervisors. On rare occasions, they get along with their supervisor and there's this hierarchy, supervisor and then the person who's above them who basically browbeats them. And in other words, you know, they want, they like having people beneath them because they are, they feel, uh, I should say, uh, inefficient. So they feel lacking, but their way of uh, covering it up is to grandstand and, uh, and literally try to keep anyone that has the potential to actually pass them by on a lower rung. So again, this happens, it's, this is just something that just goes straight across the board from my experience. You know, again, family, uh, so-called, you know, friends. Um, I don't know if anyone's been in a group of people that they consider to be their friends, uh, and they're into whatever they're into. You know, maybe it's just partying and partying and partying, you know, and that's, that's it, especially when uh, individuals are, uh, say, in their late teens and in their 20s, and some just go into, right into their 30s. And you're someone who just decides on for yourself that this, okay, I've experienced this, this isn't going anywhere. You know, I, I'm feeling that there's something else that I would like to do besides do, do this. And it can go on for a couple of years. You can feel this, but they'll always reassure you that this is a thing to do, you know, and so on and so forth. Also, you may be the one who's the, um, the joke, you know. They put you in a certain place. You don't feel good about it. Most people don't. Uh, some are afraid to challenge it because there's this whole thing. I need to have friends, or again, I need to be tight with family. You know, uh, blood is uh, thicker than water, and all of this. So all of these particular types of, of sayings will keep a person in this situation for a while. So some they stay in there, which means that they're more of a weaker. Uh, weaker personality, weaker consciousness, but there are those who come to a certain realization for themselves that they want more. And that more that they want has nothing to do with what the people around them are doing, are into. There are times, um, for instance, I have um, some relative units where they had three kids and the youngest one, for whatever reason, he was a really little uh, little guy. He got into um, oceanography. He was, he was like, you know, four years old and into these books on fish and, you know, and the ocean and so on and so forth. And they just, oh, you know, they were kind of a curious kid and so on. They humored him. But when he became an adult and got out of uh, and graduated from high school, he decided to pursue uh, was it, uh, marine biology. Now, this is a group that comes from uh, working in the factory and nursing and so on and so forth. Very, very insulated, very isolated from uh, the broader spectrum of, in the world. But somehow this consciousness came through and probably having something to maybe do with a past expression or whatever, he came in innately with this, in, with this interest. So they, they were concerned even talking to me and, you know, what I got into as a career was definitely nothing that any of my family units were into except for the older sibling, one of my, my older siblings. She and I ended up going into a similar field. Uh, his was just, you know, in the mind was you know, design and illustration, uh, you know, in art directing and all of that. 
that stuff, which is still not something that from the background from those who came before or the parental units, nothing, you know, they just, they didn't, they didn't understand that. But all that said, it was my mom unit was the one who introduced us to this. You know? So we got some support there. This guy, he came about this himself. He decided, I want to go to the university to be a marine biologist. And he did, and he did. And he graduated, and they had to do, um, I think, a scuba diving test or something like that. And, uh, you know, in, in one of the big rivers and so on to pass the test and pass the test and so on and so forth. And then he started to interact more with those kids who were graduates as well, who were from a different genetic background, which concerned them. Which I said, well, um, with my business, you know, it's very different like that as well. I'm fine with it. You get to, you know, you get to understand how to deal with different people and so on and so forth. They came to me worried that he's, you know, he's around these people and you know what his family is doing and so on and so forth. And they ended up just literally, you know, leading on to the point where he actually gave up on it after he went through four years of, of university to learn how to do this and went to something, and I'm not, you know, just for their own privacy, something that was a lot less than what he had gone to school for, that he had an aptitude for. And he never, you know, he never went further with it. So with them, it had to do with that particular type of culture from these folks. They felt that him moving in this, in this zone with a group that they felt were maybe superior to them, which means that they felt, well, maybe he's going to think he's better than us. We're going to have to, you know, put the thumb on him and, you know, press him down and, you know, and they succeeded in doing it. And from that point on, I always felt, he always seemed lost to me. But before that point, when he had this idea in his head, that this is what I, you know, what I want to do, and this is my interest. He seemed like he had some life going on there. Not some. It, it, it actually something that made him feel like he had something worthwhile, a passion, something that you know he could actually do. So again, this is like uh, one of those uh, stories that didn't end well. I mean, he's, he's still around, but again. Um, I guess it's never too late, but I would have a guess to say that at this point in his life, uh, with a, a small family and so on and so forth, he, you know, he pretty much gave up on it. But it had to do with how those around him treated him. It came to his passion. So this is something that goes hand in hand with that particular logic. So it happened in family use, but. It's notorious, uh, the friend thing is quite notorious also. The problem with the friend thing is you can have people in the family unit who definitely don't like you. you know, that's, you know. But you can be in a situation where you have a group of friends, let's say uh, three, or three, four, or five people, you don't know exactly what you're dealing with because you're not with these individuals 24-7, and you don't know what insecurities these individuals may have towards you. And if you're someone that has more of a light to you and you're not, you know, someone has a lot of ego and so on and so forth, a lot of times you can get pushed to the back of the, of the crowd. But they always want you around, though, for some reason. They always want you around for whatever uh, reason is, it is. But, I mean, the obvious, you know, for my reason is they're feeding on those individuals. And also, they feed on the disappointment of that particular uh, relative, you know. So you can end up with a group, and I've, I've, you know, I'm aware of this. I never liked uh, groups anyway. I always did better with one-on-one -on -one type of situations. Every time there was more than uh, me and another person, things would get dicey. And it's as though, I would say, density's just gunning for you. Just, you know, they got to throw something in there that's going to turn things into a, a good day into a really messed up day where you don't know exactly how a certain individual is going to behave out in public when there's three of you. 
Now, when there's two of us, I can I can you know manage that situation. There's been bodies, uh, and I've had situations with you know younger men and testosterone, and yeah, there's two of us, and uh, you know, and we can walk around and you know and be arrogant or whatever. I said, well, that's not my thing, man. If you want to go around and be arrogant, see you later. So what would happen? Well, I don't want to do this alone. So you know, they straighten out. Now you got three. Then you got two idiots. So the number of times that I have left you know, two idiots in the lurch because they're pushing forward something that could actually end up causing me uh, a lot of issues. I would say is something that would um, interrupt with my journey, so to speak. And there are things that people can get others into, and they're sorry about that, into that will just totally shift their whole lives, even to the point of either someone being killed or getting involved with something. Some uh, individuals are doing something, they have this plan, and you're not part of, you know, you know the in, uh, you're not in on the plan, but they do these things while you're there, and because you are with them, next thing you know, you're pulled into the situation. I used to read stories like that quite a bit when I was in New York City, where some kid who was actually uh, trying to you know, get uh, further into education and so on and so forth, but he's got these friends from the hood who are just hanging, you know, wanting to hang out like they were when they were in high school or whatever, and next thing you know, the kid's in jail. And sometimes, you know, they end up uh, running into a situation, more extreme cases, with the law and, and not making it. So these are some extreme cases, but this is literally within that same framework of individuals who have insecurity. Uh, again, everything that has to do with this realm is influenced from the other side. So whatever the feeding is, it's always about feeding. That is where it comes from. It's just another form of feeding on the one who has, uh, who's most vulnerable, or at times, and at times, who have the most energy to tap into. So with that one, I think that, uh, I think I got it rolling. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway. What are the other examples of that, like when people call it peer pressure? You know, they can denigrate you for not partying like them, mm -hmm. or denigrating you for not even um, denigrating others. Sometimes they'll try to get you to denigrate others with them. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely another common one. And that one, uh, you get a lot of that in, uh, in high school or something mm -hmm. like that. Even, and actually, uh, you know, raising a couple of kids, uh, the, start, the stuff will start in elementary school, actually, where you know, kids uh, get into this clique of who's the popular kids. Mm -hmm. And generally, the popular kids were not nice kids. I've never seen a situation where the popular kids were nice kids. Mm -hmm. They tend to be bullies, uh, you know, especially in, in, uh, when you get into high school, middle school, whatever. They tend to be jocks and, you know, the girls, you know, are part of the cheerleading and so on and so forth. And they're strutting around with their weak egos. And they have to, you know, basically, you know, bully other kids around just to make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. So, those who are in that group are literally singularly extremely weak, but they feel that because they're in a group that they're stronger, and that they can do all these different you know, types of things and get away with it. Uh, it goes to an extent, and even outside of school, we're talking about gangs and mm -hmm. kids with gang members, and they're tough when they're with their you know, their boys and so on and so forth. But you know, unless you're living with these guys and you guys go out in the group 24-7, When you go out in the group, they're interacting with others and these kind of this friction and so on and so on uh, going on. So what happens? Uh, you know, one day you got to go out and do something by yourself. And lo and behold, you know, one of the groups that you're, uh, you know, who you're, you've got issues with sees you by yourself. You send their mindset to your group and they go after you. You know, there's a lot of stories there having to do with that kind of stuff also. But uh, what you're saying has to do with, um, with peer uh, peer pressure. I guess peer pressure does cover, uh, you know, you can say family is like a you know, peer group as well. Mm -hmm. Family is like a peer group as well. 
uh, some with, uh, you know, our family, you know, we don't do this or we don't do that and so on and so forth. Um, you know. They're always pushing for groups these days too. Like even on TV, they're always like, if you don't have a family, go find some random people at the bar or at school or wherever you are, make them your family. You know? Yeah, create a family because, well, you know, they don't get in the best of with somebody who's happy being alone. <laughs> you know, you have to have an aggregate. So that's why the system pushes, you know, you know, family, friend, friend. You don't have a friend? Mm -hmm. Oh, so sad, you know. And you weren't thinking about it. You said, wow, I do things, you know, by myself. Boy, I'm really enjoying myself. I'm a very creative person. I can do all the creative things I want to do. I don't have anyone dabbling, you know, from the other side saying, well, what do you think you're doing? You know, what is this supposed to mean? Literally, individuals who have actually stuck with whatever they wanted to do, who actually would succeed even in this realm, have stories about doing something that was very different in a certain genre and having people criticize it. But again, it has to do with tenacity, how, uh, how strongly you feel about what it is you want to do. And certain individuals felt strongly about what they wanted to do. Uh, myself, I felt strongly. I didn't have any issues when it came to my family units. They never, you know, pestered me that way. Uh, the father unit couldn't figure out what the hell I was doing, but he just figured that I was zero in on it, what I was, you know, wanted to do, and I wasn't going to have it any other way. So, you know, most he could do was just kind of stand out of, out of the way. And at times he could be a bully when I was a kid, but because I was able to kind of figure him out, I was able to get around him and do what I wanted to do. When I succeeded, well, actually, before he succeeded, he was very much an individual who was very critical of you or have always some, some weird snarky thing to say about you, even if it's just how you're dressed that day or whatever, or you're making dinner, what you're making for dinner for something that, you know, doesn't look like home, you know, down home cooking like his. You know, I said, yeah, I just want to just broaden your horizons, old man, and just eat it, you know. You know, it's pretty good, but I don't know if this is Philly or not, you know. But either way, they always have something to try to literally just kind of crush you a bit. Well, actually, that might be. But this is, again, this is part of the program of the system, the realm that we live in. It can't feed off of you being satisfied or you fulfilling your passion. Or if you're moving in a certain direction, you can't go without them, even though they, they, they have nothing to contribute. So again, those are what I consider the, you know, the weaker minded individuals. It's like, you know, row your own boat, so to, so to speak. So if I'm out there rowing my own boat, I'm not saying, hey, everybody come with me. And there are individuals uh, who will, you know, uh, I'm going here. Everybody come with me. But I always have more respect for those who would choose their path and walk that path alone if they must. And nine times out of ten in this world, you will always be walking the path alone. So this whole concept, we're walking as a group, all, you know, locked arms or whatever, <laughs> that is not real. That's the Wizard of Oz or something like that. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so this is a great segue into another true logic, or do you want to continue with this? No, we can segue. Um, it, the next true logic we have on the list for today is, do you really care, or is it just about control? And uh, this, oh. you were talking about, um, there's many individuals who like to denigrate others as a form of control, and then they try to cover it up by saying, I denigrate you because <coughs> I care. Which, uh, I would have to guess that there are a number of you have heard that, something similar to that. You know, I'm critiquing you because I care. You know, uh, when literally you're not doing anything dangerous. Now, if you're doing something stupid, you're shooting a parrot or you decide, you know, I'm going to get in some, some craziness and I'm then I'm going to come and bring that crap, you know, home. I have perfect, you know, like myself, I'm trying to have perfect reason to say, you're not bringing this stuff. So if you want to be out there doing whatever this kind of weird stuff that uh, I feel is very detrimental to you, and you're an adult, I'm, you know, I can try to talk to you, 
And that never really works. It only works if a person hits the wall and it, it as they say, knocks some sense into them that they realize, realize for some reason that they've got to stop. But if you're um, you know, dealing with someone who's moving in that kind of a, in, in that kind of circle, in that direction, and they haven't got to the point where they realize for themselves that it's not a good place to be, you can talk and talk and talk and talk, and it won't do any good. But again, you were saying, um, go ahead. Should we go on to another uh, aspect of that? Oh, uh, sure. We can, we can uh, elaborate. Um, you were talking about, there was an, uh, an example of a, a woman who was trying to do better for herself. Her parents had belittled her for a long time, for many, many years. And she finally, with your, um, with your guidance during sessions and things, she's like, I'm going to live, I'm going to go move out. I'm going to live on my own. I'm going to be more independent. But then as she's trying to, you know, get her new place, her, her relatives try to say, yeah, go do that. Just to minimize her step forward by, by putting, lacing their, her experience with their telling her to do it. Yeah, it's, it's true. You make a decision, or the, uh, the person made a decision, uh, which took a while for her to actually, a, a lot of tenacity for her to get, you know, um, nervy enough to go against the wishes of these individuals that she has spent all her life with at that, at that uh, point. And coming to a realization that they were a hindrance. They said, look, you don't have to, you know, throw hate mail or anything at these individuals, just you know, peacefully just be stern about separating yourself from that situation and getting your own place. And yeah, she said, well, I decided I'm going to get my own place. Said, yeah, I think it's about time you get your own place. She said, what the? <laughs> you know, which again, is like another control thing. You know, it's, it's really bogus, but again, when you're a traumatized you know, kid or sibling or whatever, there's a lot of times you don't really see what they're doing because you grew up surrounded by this kind of madness. But again, with uh, the sessions, I can point this out to you. You know, they're still trying to exercise control. Like you can't make decisions on your own. Even though you just made a decision, they took that, they're trying to take that from you. <laughs> you know, I decided that, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was time for you to go anyway. And I was going to tell you, you know, uh, uh, six months ago, you know, but in reality, if you never left, they'd never say Jack. So this is some another little easily form of control, mm -hmm. of minimizing, or, you know, you're just minimizing, making someone feel less. So again, I have a lot of respect for those who can just jump out at some point and say, you know, I'm going to do this uh, sink or swim. But you don't have any friends, so what? I don't know if I had friends when I thought I had friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number of individuals, when you start to move in your own, your own path, not another circle, mind you, but your own path, the, the, the amount of frowning and and criticism and so on and so forth. You know, and I knew a guy personally like that, but he just, he was just such a little robot. He didn't realize I didn't give a crap what he had to say about anything that I did. So I'm being creative. I'm designing something for myself. He comes over and he's like, you know, what the hell is this? I said, don't worry about it. You know, you wouldn't understand. Which again, that's just another, my own little snarky way of throwing it back at them. Like, oh, you have to go into law over me, like, oh, uh, <laughs> you're, what you're doing is weird. What I do is not weird. And in the reality was that I was more talented than, than that individual. He said to me, oh, I'm, I'm his good friend and so on and so forth. But in the end, there's major jealousy. So, met me at a certain age, like 21 or whatever. You know, you're at a certain point, you know, when you're, when you're 21 and you, you get out of uh, college or whatever, and you're, you're working at trying to get started because you don't have any relatives set up in whatever uh, uh, location that you're entering. So, you know, I'm working my way far 
earn to get to where I have to go. And then when it finally starts to click, they see, oh, you know, he had a better situation. You know, had individuals in the field were in the similar, were in the similar field. And, you know, they go, I'm just this little nerd do well struggling and so on and so forth. And, you know, Oh, denigrating suggestions for things for me to do to get break into the you know into the industry and so on and so forth. Things that would just denigrate the shit out of me. And I said, no, I, if that's how I got to do it, I guess I'll just not do it. Literally, I said, I'll find another way to get it. And I did find another way to get it in, in, into my field. This individual, again, uh, added in new people in it and so on and so forth, but not as talented as I. So as long as I wasn't, you know, I didn't have, uh, wasn't landing, landing, a, you know, a position in the numerous companies that I went to to try to get started, I just felt very comfortable. You know, I'm doing samples, things, and so on and so forth for portfolio, and it's coming in and being critical of what I'm doing. Because in reality, he never wanted me to get going. They all, there's those who will always want you know, on the bottom. And then when you look at them, and you see the hierarchy over them, there's someone a lot of times putting them on the bottom. So because they're weak-minded, they can't, you know, fight to you know, make a stance for themselves. They try to find someone who they feel has less than them. And then put them on the bottom. And that's a system, system that's, you know, that's very pervasive in the world. So, anyway, the um, Well, under this topic is a very, um, I've seen it in, in media a lot of times, females doing it, but I know that it doesn't matter what gender, uh, but it has to do with where they will compliment you. On the regular but insults you almost the same amount or a little more or always nitpick and then whenever you want to leave they want to act like they were doing you a favor and that they were so you know they were so caring for you but all those times like you said you have to weigh whether a person is more negative or otherwise well i think you 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 have you have some stories similar to that mm -hmm. of your own own personal stories yes. i won't uh, you know, uh, talk about it and if you're not interested in talking about it, I'll do it quite actively. To... Uh, having to do with you, um, your interest in art. Oh, okay. Or even your interest in music and certain individuals who literally wanted to take over that. Oh, uh, yes. So I definitely had relatives that, like, if, if they gave me, if, for example, being um, of a certain nationality, you end up being, getting into origami. But then I take it farther than they would have, you know, you have to make a thousand cranes for a, for a Japanese well, wedding usually. And um, if you, that's, so that's like an introduction as a little kid, you get taught to make an origami crane. But I took it farther and I looked up books on my own and I read them and I practiced every single day. And I pass out origami to everyone, but they wanted to take credit for that too. Or they wanted to, they would like try, they would do these things that were kind of like off colored, like where they would, they would act like they're helping me by saying, oh, I want you to make origami for this really big convention, but she knows I'm only one staff member, just me. So I'm, now I'm gonna have to do this project. Oh, I gave you money. You know, you shouldn't even- Well, it has to do with the number, right? Yes, the number of, of cranes that we needed to, uh, of items that we needed to make. But then when I was making it, I, I was, feeling really emotionally um, uncomfortable. And I realized just focusing on her and her convention, it, there was something feeding on me and I was drained as well. So it was a really difficult thing to do. Well, you were saying, uh, from what I recall, and that, um, you know, you were still, I wouldn't say, it was kind of like a beginner. You was, you know, uh, at it. And, and then this person decided, okay, you're yep. the only one doing the, the, the crane. And then they say we need a thousand cranes by a certain a you know, time, yeah. time frame that was extremely tight. Mm -hmm. And so it was as though this person was trying to sabotage you. And, you know, in other words, oh, I'm helping. 
well, oh, look, I found you again. You can do a thousand of these. Said, well, um, you know, if I had been doing this for 10 years straight before this point, sure, maybe I can knock out and and even a thousand. I, even then, that yeah, would be, even then, I, I need to get other other people who could help me who have the skill to make quality origami pieces because the relatives, of course, offered their help, but it's like. But they don't know how to do it, is it? No, they don't. So, you know, <laughs> again, so it's like a situation, again, where of these particular individuals, they try to set you up. Yes. But I'm helping you, or I give you money uh, to, to literally uh, try, you know, to do something that is really very, very difficult to accomplish. You know, so either you back away from it, then they say, well, you know, I'm trying to help you and you don't want my help. I thought you were trying to be a businesswoman. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and again, they're talking about something that you do that they don't know how to do. Um, even as an extreme professional in my, in my field, every so often I run into uh, young art directors right out of, uh, out, of, out of art school who would say, oh, I have this project for you. This should be easy for you. Mm. And I would have to say, uh, that's up to me to decide, you know, uh, whether it's easy or not. Or another one, one of my responses said, if it's so easy, why don't you do it? Well, you you know, Chief, thank you for making me realize that because after she did that, I quit. I quit that uh, that website I set up and the business that I started with it. Yeah, so she succeeded in crushing right. that particular, uh, you know, dream or, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, uh, or interest. Mm -hmm. And that's another way that, you know, they, they try all these little clever ways mm -hmm. to try to keep you yep. at a certain point, at a certain mm -hmm. uh, level. I also recall that this particular individual would take you to high-end restaurants and say you would never be able to eat in a place like this if you wanted to. Yeah, and sometimes she would not like say it to my face, but that's definitely the vibe that I'd always get because she also said to my face, you know, it's not really, you know, it's, it's kind of like her vibe was like, it's unfair that you can just draw people a present or fold origami and give it as a gift. And she kept, she was very close to my face and kept saying that. And I was just like, it's feeling very uncomfortable. It's like a monster. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, a, this, like, you know? like, like almost like I should feel guilty for being able to do something that she couldn't do. Yeah, well, again, that's someone trying to glamour someone when they do that. And I think I've talked about individuals staring into your eyes and saying things. Because this, this is this weird, janky kind of hypnotism that they're trying. Where there's their density that feels very comfortable doing that, or it's really them. But again... Uh, I'm not going to excuse people for having uh, an attachment that will override them in that way. You have to be vulnerable enough to allow them to, or you have to be unaware enough that there are such things as attachments and so on mm -hmm. that will influence you know, a weird behavior or inappropriate behavior. So again, so yeah, I can make you aware, and then once I make you aware, what are you going to do about it? But again, here's the, here's the deal. You're they're the, the accomplice. And, you know, you do something and someone says, well, why'd you do that? Well, it was the voice in my head. Oh, she's crazy. When in reality, there probably was a voice in the head telling you, yeah, this is a really, you know, screwy thing and so on and so forth. But who's going to pay for it? You will. So that's, you know, the perfect excuse to just be aware of I got some stuff going on that's talking to me. What is this? I tell you, it's an attachment. I can pull that sucker out, but they don't usually travel sing, you know, singularly. You, you think it's just this one voice, but then pull that one out, then it replaces with another one. Pull that one, and so on and so forth. It has to do with how many attachments you pick up along the way before you run into a situation like mine where I can tell you what it is. And good luck getting those out by yourself, especially if you don't know what you're dealing with. So, yeah, she's, she's doing this stuff. She's looking in your eyes. And it's almost like she's hoping, you know, saying it's unfair for you to be talented. It's unfair for you to be talented. And, you know, hoping that at some point it is unfair for me to be talented, <laughs> untalented or talented. It's unfair for me to be talented. You know? And... It's literally like trying to trigger something or throw something, you know, because everyone has their own attachments and so on. So sometimes it's a war of your attachments over their attachments. But generally, those who are more domineering and you feel and you look up to them, your 
attachments are weaker than theirs. Because if your attachments are stronger than theirs, no, I'm not taking this back from you. No, it's, I mean, it's my talent. I do what the hell I want with it. It's a, it's, oh, this, I don't know what this is about. Maybe I am too bad. He even said there was some rando guy in college. Yeah. And so you had too many talents. I, I, I thought it was really interesting what you said about the system and how they have a web that connects the density. And um, because I'd have random strangers say triggering or disrespectful things that their relatives had said. And they are just random people I've only known for one day or even less time than that. Yeah, that's no accident. This is, you know, or it has been, but I'll say this for the sake of this, this is a dense grid. So, you know, you say, wow, that's weird. This person I don't even know just said the same thing that someone that I've known intimately for a number of years that's very negative, and they said the exact same thing to me. This is a system saying, well, we're, you know, we're going to make it feel like because it's rando said the same negative thing as someone that you know, it must be true. Mm -hmm. So, again, because, you know, you have tenacity, don't like to use stubbornness because, you know, uh, Kirkland can be stubborn in the wrong way, but a certain uh, tenacity to, to stick with what it is that you feel is right for yourself. What is the thing that will override that kind of thing? And definitely what, um, just be, my passion alone wasn't able to override those things. She, everything that you taught, uh, taught me, taught us, has really helped, been the really uh, determining factor as to what pushed me through because it did weaken me. I did feel tired, especially mm -hmm. before I started learning about what you teach and, mm -hmm. and you from having sessions with you, definitely. So do you feel there's uh, something else that you connect to that? Um, well, for example, people tend to um, get mind screwed by the way that people control them. I noticed that like sometimes people will really run back to their captors, run back to their controllers as if that's as if they are actually having, um, they have their strings in them. That's what they, they say sometimes. Yeah, it's like they yeah, got their, their, uh, their strings in, their claws in them, or uh, there's a number, of other, <laughs> you know, other, a number of other things for it, mm -hmm. where uh, because you're constantly, this is where we talk, and I've talked about mantras um, recently in a very different way, where the concept of mantras are just some phrase some short phrase a lot of times. And the system doesn't mind short phrase mantras because they have volumes of mantras. So even if there's some uh, religious organization you're involved in and you're deep in it and they teach you all of these scriptures and things to repeat, 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 it can be like you know some serious uh, phrasing, you know, you know, like paragraphs or whatever. And you get a, you know, you get, a reward of the kid, you know, for doing this. Or you get a position of helping them, you know, mind through other people. But again, that, those phrasings are mantras. So they're not just these little, you know, so mantras don't just are excluded to just these little phrases that, you know, I, uh, I am, oh, I don't know, I'm going to have a, Great day. I had a great day today. I'm repeating, I had a great day. But when growing up, the scriptures that say you have to remember this, 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 that will override that I have a great, I'll have a great day today. Because it doesn't guarantee that you're going to have a great day. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, I think I had someone on the forum some time ago was telling me how they were going to do their day and, you know, and and my day's gonna be like this, and, I, and I'm vibing. I said, I don't think it's working. Uh, so are you saying that it's, it's working or you're, you're trying to get it to work? And I guess because they weren't expecting me to question them, they, they stalled and literally said more or less that, uh, and I'm trying to get it to work, I just keep saying it anyway. So the thing that does work is the mantra that the system gives. So if mantra says you are lowly because of A, B, and C over and over and over again. It's also, it's a, you know, call it court screen, but it's called brainwashing also. 
And there's no person who's sitting here or in this world who hasn't been brainwashed to some degree while coming up as a kid. Some parental units, some sibling units, or whoever telling you something negative over and over and over again, even if it's crafty in the way that they say it. Oh, I don't think that's something you can do. I don't think that's something. Now, if you're two years old and say, I want to drive the family car, I'm bad. It makes sense. But if this kid's saying, you know, I would like to be a fashion designer when I'm, you know, when I'm young. Oh, that's... I want you to be a doctor. When I was doing men's uh, conferences way back when, um, there were a number of men who came to these um, retreats who were doctors and lawyers. And they were there searching for something more than being a doctor or lawyer. To the point where they said, okay, I became a doctor, I started making money, I got a house, a car, I got the hot woman, and I still feel like, you know, I, I still feel empty for some weird reason. So sometimes they'll actually jump out of that vocation and go into the thing that they're really interested in in the first place, and that people quite well enough. So fortunately for me, I had a uh, you know parental unit that was observant and just watched. You know, uh, you know, being a doctor is a good career. You know, I said, oh, okay, well, I'm you know I'm seven years old. I, all, all right, you got to think about your, what you're going to do in the future. Doctor is a good career. I want you to keep a scrapbook, and I kept a scrapbook. I really did. You know, looking at newspaper articles, new inventions in medicine, and so on and so forth, and all that stuff. And for some reason, she could tell that I was just going through the, through the, um, the in other words, going through the motions. So, you know, this is about, you know, and then just paste it on there. Sometimes when you don't read their article, just put it in the scrapbook. Hey, mom, the scrapbook. She said, well, I don't know. This kid's not that enthusiastic about this. So, you know, a few years later, he says he seems to be really into creating stuff. I like to build things. I like to draw. I like, you know, all this creative stuff. And sometimes, you you know, individuals look out and they have a parental unit that actually is thinking about, you know, uh, your happiness and what you can do so that, you know, uh, in other words, you utilizing your creativity to actually also be able to survive and make a living. So she went out, and she didn't know anything about commercial art or anything like that. So she said, it's an art, and she was reading it, reading it, uh, you know, reading about it, and so on. And so she presented it to myself and to the older sister. And we ended up going into that field, and I did very, very well in that field, you know, by the way. The sister didn't do bad herself. But she ran into a situation getting married. And with a lot of situations in marriage, it can be either gender, but she married you know, uh, her, you know, a male man who had ego issues. So seeing, and he was in the same industry that, that she was in, I was in, and seeing that this person is quite talented. And I've seen women uh, uh, that I knew while, when I was working my way up who would get married, and next thing you know, their career just, you know, they have no career anymore. So, so, oh, well, I'm having my third kid or something like that. Having kids is whatever, but the thing is that I would sense very strongly that this person was like, I don't want anyone to compete with me in the field, so I'm going to find a way to literally just shut this person down. Therefore, also, I'm, you know, I'm the head of the household, you know, I laud over, you know, all that I see and all this kind of business, and you are literally one of the underlings under my wing. And that happens a lot also. And I think it was, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. If, if 
you say something? No, I think there was something, um, someone had a suggestion that came up. But I, I, I kind of got away from it, so I'm not sure if it fits in at, the, uh, at this point. But you can, uh, if you feel that there's something that uh, can be added on to what I'm talking about, you can just go ahead and. Well, I, I did know that they have this other thing where uh, there's a way to control someone. They'll say a positive thing, but their intent is totally negative. Mm -hmm. I remember you had an example of a woman who, who her mother unit would always say she loved her, but say it with a screaming and obviously yeah, an angry face. Yes, yeah, angry, and it's so, so it's like mind screw for people, and yeah. if they especially when they're raised that way by the end by when they're adults, they're just totally there. Yeah, she did, and this person really just had some major issues to the point where it was almost literally impossible to talk to her. And give suggestions, whatever voices in her head would just say, no, nah, you don't have to do that. And then we'll want to touch and whine about, you know, similar problems and say, can we talk about that? Uh, I thought you, you know, go this direction and do that. Uh, I decided to do something else. I said, and did it work? No, nah, it didn't work, but you didn't try what I told you. So, you know, this type of uh, environment can literally cause individuals to sabotage themselves. Literally sabotage themselves. So you're not worth at this. You're not worth even trying to be what you would consider to be successful. So, <coughs> excuse me. Again, those who are always on that level are always the weakest, weakest ego, weakest consciousness, the most insecure, because they have to have someone to believe in. Whether it's their kid, or sibling, or a so-called friend, or if they're a supervisor who have employees who are coming in at base level, That's all wrapped up in it. Sometimes, Chief, I know uh, I've experienced it where you have a lot of really dense relatives or people around you, and the one that the one that treats you, you know, what you think is the nicest, they're like, "Oh, come to me," you know, all those horrible relatives. You know, they don't know what they're, you know, doing. I, I, I'm the only one who cares about you, but they are controlling you too. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. It's literally like. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to pull you in with this illusion of kindness so that I'll be the sole feeder because mm -hmm. you're going to come to me. Mm -hmm. You're getting tired of being chewed on by these guys. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, you come in, you said that um, after a certain point, you would feel mm, kind of weird in that individual's company as well. Oh, definitely. And uh, you don't realize how much they're feeding on, to, on you until you get away from them in a certain environment. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you don't like, for example, you don't know how bad it smells in the locker room sometimes until you get leave and get some fresh air and come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how it's like. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the outward <laughs> So, uh, uh, needless to say, these are, these are short, but I'm, I'm, uh, they work for me. Um, when they say comes back, there was one thing I did want to touch on. Um, having to do with uh, someone uh, brought up uh, a, a quote that I, I had put up, yes, and it had to do with uh, lying to density is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Believing a perpetual liar is akin to insanity, however, lying to density is not a problem. Yeah, so um, I kind of seen this as self explanatory, uh, and I believe Ms. A had uh, approached it a, a couple times, maybe. Uh, during uh, the women's forum, mm -hmm. but to reiterate, here's a system, a situation, or a system that lies to you all the time, I'm trying to get you to do something that you don't want to do because you feel like this is sketchy. They say, "Are you available?" And you say, oh, yeah, "I don't want to do it." But yeah, I'm available. Next thing, you're doing something that you don't want to do. It's okay to say. No, I'm not available. Or Ms. A has mentioned something. Uh, what's the one we've seen that you can Oh, yeah. Uh, 
um, in college, they would always try to get, there was, well, especially one individual, she was always trying to get everyone to party. And she kept, a lot of people tried to invite me to their uncomfortable situations or unhealthy lifestyle. And I would just always say, if it's not in something that's going to be investing in myself, I'm not going to do it. And I would just say that I always had plans and I would make sure that I would just go and practice guitar or practice piano or I'll go play basketball or do some exercise. And so whenever they would catch me, I'd be doing what I felt was giving back to me. Well, I know that you uh, used an example of, okay, a woman heading in a certain direction, trying to go home, oh, yes. for instance, and some guy comes up and obviously very predator uh, energy going mm -hmm. on. So where are you going, pretty lady? Yes. So I'm going home where I live alone. <laughs> said, no, I'm, uh, you know, either I'm going to meet my husband or um, I'm going to the police station around the corner. Join Perfect reason <laughs> to lie. Yeah. So anyway, with that that said, uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Sure. And um, and thanks everyone for Thank participating. Thank you everyone for joining. Yes, and again, uh, thanks for the uh, you know, sending uh, what you wanted me to clarify having to do with the two logics. Uh, we saw what you were going to go through. Uh, we may I may continue to go on with it, or or I may break it up. And uh, the next uh, forum will, uh, will maybe I'll uh, touch on a different subject matter. And if I do, that will be uh, pretty much telegraphed to you guys. Uh, so if you want to interact in some way or participate in some way with um, suggestions or questions, uh, we'll let you know. Okay. So thanks everyone for showing up. And we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.